Hi, welcome to Tyrael Arts with Terry. I'm Terry McFeely, creator of Tyrael Magic, the spray on fabric stabilizer that makes fabric easy. Tyrael Magic is for all natural fibers, cottons, wools, velvets, silks, rayons, you name it. It also works on some polyesters, but I recommend that you test the polyester to make sure that it absorbs the Tyrael Magic because if the Tyrael Magic isn't absorbed, it's not gonna do its magic. There are several uses for Tyrael Magic. The number one, the reason I created the Tyrael Magic, it's to make fabric more paper-like and extremely stable. So that you could do 3D art, such as the flowers that I've created, embroidery, inkjet printing, thread painting. It's the use, the number one use for Tyrael Magic. But I'm also gonna be showing you a lighter use, a use that quilters and sewers have told me about that they do. Instead of using starch, they use Tyrael Magic, and we're gonna go over that use. Treating your fabric is easy. I'm gonna demonstrate in a dry bowl, but also a dry sink or a baggie will work. We will go over the baggie next, but I just wanted to treat a full quarter yard of fabric just so you can see exactly how to do it. I like to spread the fabric out. I turn the nozzle to the wide spray and I just spray all one side and then I flip it over. It's getting pretty damp and I spray the other side. So you can see it's pretty wet. I like to scrunch it. And if there's any magic left in the bowl, I wipe it up and I scrunch it. And then I hold it up to the light to make sure there's no dry spots. It looks a little dry here, so I'm going to just shoot it, but I think everywhere else it looks great. So once again, I'll squeeze it and when you squeeze it, sometimes it'll just come to the surface and that's perfect. You don't need it dripping. So, okay, we're gonna hang that to dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. The next way I'm gonna show you to treat Tyrael Magic is in a plastic bag. What I love about the plastic bag is that if there's any Tyrael Magic left over, it stays in the bag, you just reseal it and keep it in there until you need to treat your next piece of fabric. Um, the only warning I have about a plastic bag or any, any fabric that you're treating is to do the light colors first because sometimes your darker colors will darken the Tyrael Magic and if it stays in the bag or in the um, bowl, it could uh, tint your fabric. So do the light fabrics first. So I'm just, as you can see, just spreading this out a little bit more and just spraying in the bag. I also put a large black plastic um, bag down on my table. This table is pretty durable, but if you're on your dining room table or your kitchen counter, you may wish to use the plastic bag to protect the surface. Tyrael Magic is safe, it wipes clean, but I wouldn't be doing this on a wooden table. So I'm going to go ahead and scrunch it inside the bag and then let's just see what it looks like. It's pretty wet. You want it to be damp, but you can see here there's some dry spots. I could respray those or I could fold and then just re-scrunch because it feels pretty wet. As you can see, there's quite a bit of Tyrael Magic here. In fact, I could squeeze some out in the bag. This is just a little much, too much, and I'm being thrifty. But there you are. I'm going to uh, let both of these hang for a few minutes, and then when we come back, we'll dry them to a perfect smooth finish. Okay, the fabric's been out in the sun for about 10 minutes. It's still damp, not completely dry. And that's the best because when you go to press it, the dampness gets all the little wrinkles out because remember we scrunched it and when you scrunch it, it gets pretty wrinkly. In the event 
that you dry it completely and it's still pretty wrinkly and scrunchy. I recommend using a spritzer with water in it, a little bottle with a spritzer on it, and dampening it because then you're going to get the same effect that we're getting with the damp fabric whereas it presses very smooth and flat into a beautiful sheet of fabric that you can embroider, thread paint. Also I want to mention um, this is the same method I use for t-shirt quilting. I saturate it, I dry it to damp, and then I press it. It takes all the stretch out. You can do your t-shirt quilting without any fusibles, without any iron-ons, and then of course Tiro Magic washes out. So once you're finished with your quilt, I'm just going to make sure this is good and dry. Uh, once you're finished with your quilt, you can just rinse it or throw it in the laundry. And then your quilt is all soft and natural again. But that's the treated fabric. And you can see all the nice body that it has. And here is the original fabric or a fabric piece that hasn't been, that hasn't been treated. Much different. It cuts, presses, and stitches impeccably. This second method that I'm going to be showing you now in treating your fabric with Tiro Magic is very similar to the first. It's just that it's a little bit lighter. It's more for garment sewing, quilts, where you want your seams to press open flawlessly. You want your cuts to be exact and accurate and also fray resistant. So to do this, this is just a regular piece of quilt fabric. I'm going to use the wide spray on my bottle and it's going to be 16 to 18 inches above the, the fabric. I'm just going to spray and I've used the plastic on the table again just to keep the overspray on it, not on my table. And you see that wasn't very much but I'm going to go ahead and just smooth this out because that's going to help the fabric to absorb. And I noticed over here there's hardly any, so I'm just going to respray those just a couple times. And then I'm going to flip the fabric over and we're going to spray the back side just like we did the front side. And it's not perfectly even. There's actually a third method for that, but I'm going to save that for a different video when we make uh, bias tape. Just a little bit more on the edges. Okay, so that should be about it. I'm going to set this aside for 10 minutes and then we're going to come back and press it. But in the meantime, I have a couple of pieces here that I've already treated and pressed. I use the exact same method on this fabric and as you can see, it's got a lot of body. It'll be easy to cut, press, and sew. This is the same fabric you can see that's untreated. It's kind of wimpy. It frays. It'll be much easier to use the treated fabric. So I was at my own quilt guild this weekend. We had a quilt show. I bought some raffle tickets and I actually won a huge basket. It was very exciting. These are all Asian fabrics. Most of them are from Japan. This is a Robert Kaufman fabric here. There's like four yards. I'm going to be making a Japanese quilt using the different fabrics. And because it's for quilting, just like garment sewing, uh, I would like just a light use of the Tiriel Magic. So I have my plastic down and I would just be spraying it just like I did the smaller pieces. But I'm going to be doing a much larger piece and I'll be smoothing it. I'm not going to go through everything, but I just want to show you how easy it is to do large pieces of fabric with Tiriel Magic when you actually put a plastic piece on your table to give you a huge work surface. I look forward to showing you some of the different techniques I'm going to be using with Tiriel Magic in making the Japanese quilt. So please subscribe to my channel so you will be updated on all my new videos coming out while I'm making this Japanese quilt, plus other techniques that I love to share. Here are some shots of my other fabrics I got in the basket. I got like 26 patterns, notions, and all these beautiful fabrics. So be sure to let me know any of your tips or uses in the comments below.
And please like this video. It helps my Google ratings. That way my YouTube channel is easier to find for people like you and other people interested in Tyrael magic. Thanks for tuning in and keep enjoying your craft.